Hello and welcome back to homework. Uh oh, I messed that W up. That's for sure. I think it's four point four. Yeah, it's homework four point four. Now I now I don't like that W at all. I tried to. There we go. That's much better. Okay. Uh, find all the missing side lengths of the tri triangles. The two triangles are similar. So then we can use proportionality. Ooh, tricky. I think our, we, here's a problem. 45 pairs with A, eight pairs with B, 17 pairs with C. We don't have any proportion, any comparator with two numbers. All of them have a variable, but it's a right triangle. So, This is this is the last square I know. Seventeen squared is two hundred eighty nine. Sixteen squared is two sixty four. Fifteen squared is two twenty five. Fourteen squared is one ninety six. Hmm 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 is this 225? Yes, there we go. So now when we square root both sides. Sweet. Now we know the, the scale factor or ratio or proportion here is times three. So this B is 18. Let's set one up here actually. 15 compared to 45 equals 17 compared to C. Ooh. So we have to do 17 divided by 15, then times that by 45, and that will give us C. This was not the smart way to set it up. I will show you in a minute a better way. But for now, 17 divided by 15 tells us that we need to multiply by 1.13333333. Multiply that by 45 to get it bigger. It's 51. Now let's set it up the easier way. Uh, remember, it also works to compare two sides on one triangle with the same two sides on the other triangle. So this would have been smarter to do. Because now we know this is just times 3. And that 17 times 3 is 51. 17 times 3. So that's uh, 10 times 3 is 30. 7 times 3 is 21. 30 plus 21, 51. The line shown has several triangles that can be used to determine the slope. Draw in the three slope defining triangles of different sizes for the line and then create the ratio of rise and run for each of the triangles you draw. Hmm. <laughs> Up three over twelve. Up two over eight, up one over four. Thinks that's what they want. And now the homework begins. Looks like some Pythagoras. Remember, it looks like it's going to make the problem harder, but it actually makes it easier because the square root of 27 squared 
is 27. Subtract, square root, you're done. Watch out for this one. Now it's the C term that is square rooted, and when you square it, you'll just get 10, but that's on the other side of the equation than these two other ones. Create a proportion for each set of similar triangles that can be used to find the missing side length indicated to solve the proportion. Yeah, yeah, make a proportion, right? And there's like two ways to do it. You can either do 5 over 15 is the same as 29 over 6x, or you can actually do the comparison in here. You can do uh, square root of 29 over uh, 5 equals x over 15, and then you can see the relationship there. Um, I'm going to do a random thing. I'm, if you wanted to do like square root of 17 times 4, you would write that as 4 root 17. Just in case you need to multiply a square root. It's kind of like a variable. You can't it can't go any farther. It's like 4x. All right. Jack and Diane are designing a trellis for some special plants they are planning to put in the backyard garden. Use the values provided on the sketch of the trellis to find the missing values of x, y, and z. You guys know what a trellis is? It's like a thing that uh, plants can grow on for support, like pea plants. And you get these little roots and stuff. Looks like a Pokemon. Okay, so you're going to see these uh, proportions. Um, Make sure that if you use this 7, you're only comparing it to other full end lengths. Like you can't, the one thing you can't do is use the 7 and a chunk. You can use chunks across, the side splitting theorem, or the just triangle proportionality theorem, says that if you compare 6 to 8, it's the same as 10 compared to this, or y compared to this. But don't get these um, full length side. If you're using chunks of sides, don't compare it to a full length side. I believe. Well, actually you can, but not not this way. That won't work. That breaks down. Okay. You'll figure it out. For this one, this is the same problem as in the lesson. Um, basically, FA over AB You start with something else. You start with FB over AB equals DB over DC. So we're using the full length. They just wanted the chunk, like I've been talking about the chunk. But we're starting with the full thing on both sides. We'll rewrite FB as FA plus AB over AB. And DB is rewritten DC plus CB over DC, or BC. I guess this should be BC also. I don't know. I disagree with them, but whatever. It doesn't matter what order you write the two letters in. Now, go back to your lesson and finish this. You've got to pull apart those fractions, do a little algebra, and you'll be great. Set up some proportions. You got this. Find the parallel line segments in the diagram and write a mathematical statement showing the parallel line segments. Okay, we haven't done this for a while. I disagree that it should be segments. Well, I don't know. Maybe people differ in their opinion. I believe this mathematical statement, which includes the whole lines that go on forever, because the lines that go on forever are parallel because of these marks. I think that shows that the segments must be parallel. So I like that better. If you want to, wow, hope that didn't come through in the recording. If you want to write it like this instead, great.
and a little notification popped up in my computer that was very loud. Now you need to write some proportionality theorem. Triangle blank blankety blank is similar to triangle blank blankety blue. And this is like congruency statements, just make sure that they're corresponding 